willkommen zu Torus TV. Herzlich willkommen bei Torus TV. Heute darf ich begrüßen den Jane 108 bei mir. Herzlich willkommen und die Veronika. Die beiden sind in der Mathematik zu Hause. Mathemagie ist das Thema und wir werden einige Interviews mit ihnen aufzeichnen und ich übergebe einfach direkt an das Wort an die Veronika. Wir werden das Gespräch in Englisch aufzeichnen, damit international verwertbar ist und ich freue mich auf die Themen, denn es gibt ganz viele, um Fibonacci, Zahl Phi und so weiter. Viel Spaß dabei. Veronika, das Wort an dich. Dankeschön, danke Michael. Ja, Ooh. welcome Jane, welcome to Germany. Thank nice you. to have you here. It's my pleasure. Um, tell us something about yourself, Jane. Who are you and what is mm. the work you're doing? I come from a Lebanese background. Both my father and mother were born in Lebanon and they left the country to give the children, us, a better life. So I went through a normal school system and I was going to become a doctor. And so I always loved mathematics, I always did well, I always loved numbers. But going through school and then university, I decided to drop out because so much was being given to me from other people. I didn't know who I was, mm -hmm. so I decided to give away everything I owned, my car, my music, my money, I grew up in a very rich house, so I gave everything away and I decided I want to go to India, but on my way to India, I, from Australia, I went up to Papua New Guinea, there's islands, mm -hmm. so I lived for two years with no money, just from the fruit of the tree and the cassava in the ground and... Um, one day the medicine man, was just the, me the families on the island, the medicine man said, um, you must eat this, because I was vegetarian, he says, you must eat some meat. Mm -hmm. And they caught this big dolphin, they call it dugong. So I ate, so we had a ceremony, when they catch a dugong, everyone on the island comes to cook it under the ground, kapmari. Mm -hmm. And it was so nice, I hadn't had meat for one year, and I ate this um, meat, and I said to the shaman, what's this, it's so nice. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, you ate the dolphin baby, the embryo. You ate the embryo. We gave you the best part. And then what happened for the next 10 years after that, I started dreaming about dolphin energy. I started painting pictures. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my pictures would be, say, like a picture of Jesus, but Jesus would have a dolphin tail. Mm -hmm. So then I started questioning all my art and my dreams and... Yeah, so I learned sacred geometry in the jungle with the, when I was with the medicine men in Papua New Guinea. They made, um, if they wanted to catch fish, they would um, a smash a vine, like a white milk. They dropped the milk, the fish come floating up. They showed me the barks and I watched the water mm -hmm. or a leaf would fall down. I, I noticed, oh, everything is a spiral, the water, the leaf. So I taught sacred geometry for myself. So Beautiful. I've never had a teacher. A lot of my friends, like Jumvala Melchizedek, he had like 72 masters, Zen masters, Chinese masters, Egyptian masters, Thoth. So his job was to bring sacred geometry into the world because he was learned. But I think my life is about soul memory because I've ne every time I wanted to study something, I want to become a yoga teacher, I'll go t to a retreat in the mountains for one month, but on the first day, when we have to get up at four o'clock in the morning, I'd slip and hurt my back. So every time I tried to study Ayurveda or homeopathics or anything, there was always an accident. So I realized I'm not meant to learn with anyone. Yeah, so my job is to make mathematics beautiful and fun because I believe it's a star language. It's been given us to us from for 10,000 years and the problem with the school system today is that even if you say the word mathematics or if you muscle test someone, straight away the word mathematics is weak. Mm -hmm. um, and the word sacred is scary. Like um, when, when I say sacred, the problem is people think it's religious, like Christianity. Yes. But when I say sacred geometry, I'm, sacred means something that is forever exactly. or permanent, timeless. And so you're basically trying to give something timeless to the world as a symbolic language like mm. in the ancient times they used symbols to communicate exactly, that's right. so basically you're giving this to the world to 
um, yes, have a timeless language and it's mm. also somehow a soul communication because the soul also talks in pictures as exactly. we know through dreams for example. And everyone's got a mobile phone, it's all based on mathematics, everything yes. is based on algorithms and codes and numbers. Every banking system, our home, our telephone number, satellite mm -hmm. technology, it's all numbers. Yes. And yet we don't appreciate numbers, we don't love mathematics. Exactly. Yeah. Because you also said in your work that we work a lot with our left brain, the male brain. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to connect the right feminine brain to the left That's masculine me. brain. So you call it whole brain working. That's right. Is that right? That's correct. And it, we had that at the time of Pythagoras, so two and a half thousand years ago. If you wanted to study the language of the gods, the sacred maths, you had to fast for one year mm -hmm. and you had to be silent for one year. You had to shut up mm -hmm. and, and you had to heal the emotions and you had to live on pure food so that <clears throat> the cells in your body could talk to one another and remember because we've forgotten who we are. And so what happened was when we, you and I went to school, the mathematics that we learned at school was a tradition for two and a half thousand years. So they were teaching all this right brain stuff. They were teaching them mathematics of pine cones and sunflowers. And the, if this is the sun, the, the planets, as they separate from the sun, they're all in a special thing called the Fibonacci sequence. Mm -hmm. So we had all this, but something happened a hundred years ago. Um, the fundamental Christians decided that we want to take away this ancient knowledge. They took away the magic squares, Fibonacci, the five platonic solids and fourth dimensional geometry, it all got stripped out of the curriculum. And the tragedy is, is that no one loves mathematics. So, so really what I'm doing is not even radical. People say, oh, the, this sacred geometry is so extreme and radical, it's not real maths. But it was the original mathematics. And what I'm doing is putting back into the curriculum what was already there. It's always been there. It's our connection to the stars and to, the, to our cells. And when I talk about the the galaxy and the atoms. I'm talking about a model called the torus. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you look at this center here, it's being sucked into the center. So the wavelengths are going infinitely small. That's the connection to our cells. But if you look at the other side, it's actually getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So this torus shape is a symbol. It's a ring. It literally means a ring that connects the infinitely large with the infinitely small, which means if we study the real mathematics, we can learn how to navigate again. This is like a device that can help us navigate through time and space. So I believe that the Taurus is the future model because at the moment the whole world is, the technology of today is all based on explosion. As we only think that there's this big bang theory where everything exactly. forever gets bigger and bigger, but that mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. So the Taurus, if you study it, as it spirals this way here, mm -hmm. clockwise, like the Earth in the Arctic, as it crosses the equator, the, the spin reverses. So where I'm from in Australia, everything goes anti-clockwise. When we take the water, the plug out of the bath, the water goes anti-clockwise. Whereas here, there's a different spin. Mm -hmm. So sacred geometry is, is trying to remember the language of the Merkaba. Merkaba means the counter-rotating fields. And that's what's taken us back to nature. So we need to copy nature, comprehend it, understand nature, mm -hmm and then build our designs based on the leaf, on the crystals, on the trees and yeah, so that's that's our teacher, the Mother Earth. Yeah. And your dream, Jane, is also to teach children um, at a small age to, to love mathematics and to comprehend the beauty of mm. mathematics to, um, yes, build a solid ground in their childhood to develop this positive thinking about numbers, about this sacred geometry, right? That's right. So I, so I call them star kids because these crystal kids, they're, they're wired with more intelligent DNA mm -hmm. connection. They're just coming in with this knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if we put them through the normal school system, the children that are being born, that they won't understand this mm -hmm. curriculum so children are highly visual mm -hmm. and the problem in Australia and America is that the children are so all-knowing mm -hmm. 
we don't understand them, so we give them drugs called Ritalin, which is like mm. amphetamines. We're, we're, we're drugging our children because we don't understand. We fail as educators to teach them that what children want to learn is they want to learn visual content. They don't want to learn the writing, ABC. That can come later. So the first thing we must teach children is the five platonic solids because that's the shape of all atomic structure and that it's a visual language, they get it. Beautiful. Mm. So I'm writing lots of workbooks on um, three-dimensional geometry, um, the mathematics in nature of pine cones and sunflowers. Mm -hmm. I work with magic squares. So a magic square is like a box of numbers. So if I gave you nine playing cards from one to nine and I said to you, can you make all the numbers add up to the same number, um, you'd only have one chance, like in 500,000. Mm -hmm. the, the probability of you making a magic square is very rare, but the answer would be 618, which is 15, 753, that's 15, mm -hmm. 294, and that's also 15. But the three columns also add up to 15, and the, the two diagonals. So what that means is that here's a box of numbers where everything is harmonic. Mm -hmm. The as above, so below, what's to the left is to the right. So you might just say oh, it's just a pretty box of numbers. But what I do is, um, ever since I was, I was at high school, I, we're looking for order amongst the chaos. So I would draw in a line from one to two to three to four. We're looking for order mm -hmm. amongst the chaos. And when we draw these patterns, this is maybe with a five-year-old child, when we draw a pattern and we superimpose it, we end up with, say, the atomic structure of diamond or platinum. So my discovery, my discovery was that numbers, we could enter the world of nuclear physics through mathematics. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that mathematics is a star language. It's speaking mm -hmm. a universal language of connection. So when you, so numbers represent, say, the left brain, the male brain, and when we connect one, two, three, four. We're rewiring our neural pathways so we make beautiful patterns. And a pattern is the right brain, that's the feminine brain. So the secret, I believe, is that we have to teach children pictures and shapes and pattern. And this is the universal language. We're doing it back the front. We're forcing children to learn all this, un this not interesting stuff and, okay. and they shut down. So. so basically what you're saying, they should first learn the, the images, the right brain knowledge yes. to connect to the left brain knowledge in a better way That's once right. they're, they grow up, right? I just spent three years in S Singapore and Malaysia mm -hmm. and the government, the Minister for Education invited me to come and say, we've got a big problem, Jane. Um, they, if the newspapers were saying the children in Malaysia are get big F. Mm -hmm. F for fail in mathematics, mm -hmm. and the government doesn't know how to fix up the maths. I said, you need to sh teach them um, die Kunst des Arlen. You need <laughs> to teach them the art of numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, they're interested. And the other problem is that in the last three, four years, mm -hmm. there's 30,000 children being born now with autism. Mm -hmm. exactly. And so I'm developed in the reason why I'm working in Asia is that um, they don't they don't know how to teach an autistic child, and an autistic child is a genius. They, the reason why, it's called, we call it dyslexia, when you don't know how to connect things, but the, the, these dyslexic children are so smart and genius. They can tell you everything about Mercury and Mars and have the birth date of every movie star. They're so smart, and we don't understand them. So I'm experimenting in Asia that if we teach them sacred geometry, they love it, they totally, understand the language of shape. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, so I'm very excited about working yeah. with children. And I believe that if you can, whatever I teach a 10 year old is the same for an adult. It's the same thing. Beautiful. Yeah. And now you're here in Germany. We yes. have the year 2018. And we're so happy to have you here in beautiful Bavaria. <laughs> it's beautiful. And um, yes, we're so much looking forward for your work and what's going to happen within the next years. This is your first time in Germany. Yes, I just happened How to did be you in like France. It? Well, I just happened to be in France for a conference of 
about 90 people came from overseas to study at the Chartres Cathedral. Mm -hmm. So I thought while I'm in France, being invited to teach, I'll just connect with someone in Europe. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote to you and I said, um, is it possible to get a group together here? Mm -hmm. And we did, when we, it was just an idea and we did it. So. Yes. And we manifested it and now you're here and we are very happy. Yes. And I thank you so much for the interview and yeah, for many more to come. And thanks for translating the Art of Number book that's made, made it possible to share the information. You're welcome. It's wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here on Toros TV with the Toros from Chain. Mm. <laughs> yes. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.